Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another FIFA 21 video where today we are going to be sharing with you what I think could be the best formation in the game right now. Certainly from my experience and in my own opinion, this is what I think is potentially the best formation right now. But if you guys do enjoy the video and you do want to see more, make sure you drop a thumbs up. Make sure you go and follow us on Twitch. As you can see, top left, we've got 193 followers. We are close to 200 followers. So if you're interested in watching a stream on Wednesdays, Fridays and Sundays all throughout team of the season. Make sure you do go and drop us a follow on Twitch. It would be much appreciated. So without further ado, going into this formation. Now, what could this formation be? It is the last formation that we have today for our series, our little mini series on game plans and what is the best game plans and what are my game plans that I'm going to be running all throughout team of the season. And it is this 4-4-1-1 formation. Now, I had a terrible start to this weekend league. I got really unlucky. I had two disconnects straight off the bat. Uh, we had some internet issues. So I was already up against it. I was 5-4 and four at one point, And I managed to recover all the way up to 17-4. and four, And it was massively due to this formation right here. We managed to win 12 straight games all the way from 5-4 and four to 17-4. and four. And this formation just has everything. I think it's a really, really tough formation to, to break down. It is an incredibly good formation in the attacking phase. It just really has everything you need to succeed in FIFA this year. Now, in terms of the instructions, these are the instructions that I was using on my team this week. Now, balance on the defensive style is where I always like to go. I don't like to play on a press. It just doesn't really work for my current play style. In terms of the width, keeping it standard on around about five. I don't really fiddle around with the uh, the defensive width really on any formation. I like to keep that very much the same. In terms of depth, I've gone that back down a little bit to seven. I was up at eight. I think I was just having a little bit too many issues, just a little bit too high. Um, you know, I was I was playing on seven for a long, long time, and I wanted to slowly start moving that depth up, uh, potentially all the way up to ten, so I could get in the face of my opponents. But I think eight just became a little bit too high, especially at team of the season now. A lot of people are going to have ninety nine pace players, so you don't want to be too high even if you do have and at the moment i don't have the quickest defenders you know if you're someone who plays fullbacks at center back you can afford to play a little bit higher but i'm still playing with boateng uh, his his flashback card or his moments card sorry and team the van dyke so i'm not playing with the fastest center back so i can't afford to go too high on my depth so your depth really depends on how comfortable you are defending and like the speed of your defenders you know if you're using center backs if you're using fullbacks whatever it may be that's going to determine the depth you play Offensive style, I've gone fast build up. I kind of switched a little bit between fast build up and long ball. Um, it was they were both working in different scenarios. It really depends on the type of player you're playing against. If you're playing against someone who's sitting quite deep, you need to use fast build up. If you're playing somebody who's kind of a little bit more open, you can afford to use long ball because there's going to be a bit more space in behind for your players to run. Assuming you have quick, speedy strikers. Someone who's sitting really deep, you need to play fast build-up because you, whilst it might leave you open on the counter, they're only going to have maybe two or three players up top. You're going to have two or three defenders, but you should be able to defend it. But you're going to need to play fast build-up if they're sitting deep because you're going to need to play quick in between whatever space there is. And there's not going to be the space in behind to use long ball. So it really depends on who you're playing. You know What I tend to do is I tend to start fast build-up because I probably prefer it more in this formation. And then I go and see what my opponent's playing in. And you'll get a feel by half time as to what your opponent's playing. And if you think he's playing really deep, stick with fast build. If you think there's a bit more space, and switch to long ball. It really does depend on your opponent. Offensive width, I'm on 10. This was super important. And this works a lot better um, if you have your wide players playing wide. Your left and right mids. Don't try and get them involved in the attacking game in terms of don't try and get them scoring goals. Because they, their, their starting position is so deep. And it's naturally wide anyway that you can't really get them involved in scoring goals. Like I play Omri and Messi out there and they get a few goals here and there. But they, their job mainly is to stretch my opponent's team. And this is where the fast build-up and the width work really well together. Because the fast build-up breaks apart my opponents if they're playing really narrow, really solid. The fact that the offensive width will break them up and then the fast build up allows you to play in between that space you've now created. But none of that happens if you don't let the left and right mids play wide. So you need to do that when you're when you're in the offensive part. You need to, to let your players play wide and uh, really, really pull your opponent out of position. Six on players in the box, corners on three and free kicks on one, just my personal preference. Whatever you guys like to play in those three positions, you can play them there. They are adjustable. 
And then in terms of the instructions, we've got Van der Sar on comes for crossing the sweep keeper. Same as in every formation. The fullbacks, we're playing with balanced, conservative and overlap. Now, this depends on what you're playing. Now, if I'm playing fast build up, I'll have these guys on stay back while attacking. If I'm playing on long ball, I'll have these guys on balance. And the reason why is because fast build up, it it's fast build up for your whole team. So it can pull your whole team out of position. And I find that if you're playing with the really wide width and fast build up, sometimes your fullbacks can be pulled out of position. So I don't want them to be pulled out of position. So I want them to be on stay back while attacking when I'm in the fast build up. But when I'm in the long ball situation, your players aren't going to be as pulled apart. It's really just your strikers that are going to be running in behind. So your fullbacks won't be affected. So I don't mind my fullbacks going forwards. And I want them uh, really, you can have your fullbacks on inverted if you like. Uh, because if your wide players, your Omri and Messi, are, are staying you know, on the touchline, you don't necessarily need Otavio and Trent Alexander-Arnold. In, in my case, you don't need them to be running on the outside because you've already got the width. So you can afford to have these guys running inverted. I just normally have it on overlap. But it's just kind of out of habit. Uh, but you can have them on mixed if you like because then they'll do a little bit of both. That probably would make more sense. So it really depends on whether you're playing the fast build-up or the long ball. In terms of the two midfielders, Kimmich and, v uh, Kimmich and Vidal, I've got stay back while attacking and then the rest of them is standard. I really want these guys to stay back while attacking. This depends, again, on what you're doing. If you're in fast build-up and you have your fullbacks on stay back while attacking, let's say, your midfielders then can afford to be on balance because you don't want them on stay back while attacking because then you're not going to have any players going forward. If you're on long ball, then you obviously want the opposite. So it really depends, again, on... On which one you're playing. Me, I've t I typically will play in fast build-up. So the way I have it set is more more like this. So it really depends on the way you're playing. But for me, I like to have them on balance if I'm playing in fast build-up. Just so I can have a couple more players going forwards. In terms of Henri and Messi, you can see Henri. We've just got them on getting behind and nothing else. We just have them on the, the standard stuff. Or I want them to be getting in behind because I want them to be stretching the opponent. But... Other than that, they're basically on, on the same. You know, I'm, I'm just going to leave them on standard because their their aim is to, to stretch the team, stretch your opponent's defense, really pull them apart. So you can do that. Now, the reason why we don't want them on stay wide is because then they will get in the way of the fullback. So if you're playing on the, on the long ball technique and you have them on stay wide, they're going to get in the way of the fullbacks. I found that was an issue this week when I was trying it, is the fullbacks would uh, get bumped out of the way by the wingers, you know, because they're just getting like get in the way and you just have two players on top of each other and it can be then really, really easy for your opponent's counter you. So I want to have them on balance so occasionally they'll drift inside. And again, if you're going to be playing with the fullbacks on mixed, there'll be times then where Messi, for example, because he's on balance, so sometimes he might drift inside and Trent Alexander-Arnold then can go on the outside. So it's just going to really allow you to have both options. So Messi can maybe play the ball to Trent for an overlap, for a cross, for a cutback, or he can just drive on inside and he's gonna he's gonna have to track Trent because now Trent's going forward. So it really depends. It just gives you so many options. And then the two strikers up front, both on stay central, one of them staying in the middle, scoring goals, getting behind and come back on defense. So they just come off the defenders a little bit when we don't have possession. But this, if for me, is the best is the best formation right now. Like I said, I was five and four at one point. We managed to recover our weekend lead to 17 and four. So hopefully this week. Maybe I don't get so such bad luck with uh, with the internet and the disconnects and whatnot. But at the end of the day, we managed to recover our weekend league with this formation, with these tactics. And like I said, I just had this formation has everything. It has you're able to play long ball, you're able to play fast build up. It's tough to break down. You have width, you have uh, the narrowness in in the middle. You know, you have two strikers. You 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 know, you have a centre forward that can drop. You you literally have everything in this formation to be successful. Now. It's then going to be down to your play style and your personnel as to how successful this is. But for the personnel and the play style I have, I have massive, massive success with this formation. Um, hopefully, I'm going to be upgrading the team a little bit over the team in the season as the next couple of weeks go. But this is a super good formation. Definitely right now, at the moment, my favorite formation in the game, my go-to formation. Love, uh, there's a lot, love a lot of other formations, and we're going to be covering a lot of them all throughout team of the season. But right now, if you used to ask me what you think the best formation is, I think this is the best formation in the game, in my opinion. But that is it for today's video, guys. So if you did enjoy, do drop a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe as well. Make sure you follow us on Twitch. Make sure we hit that 200 follower goal. It would be much appreciated. But that is all for today, guys. Have an awesome day. I'm out.